What's up, Men 16 fans? My name is Cody, and I would like to welcome you to our YouTube channel. Uh, today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some Madden 16 salary cap rank gameplay. And I uh, just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the Madden 16 championship, some of the things that I saw, some advice that I think we could probably take away from uh, the whole experience. Uh, the first thing that I want to kind of do is say congratulations to Madden Daily. The, guy, the guys over there did a really good, good job uh, in the tournament playing really, really strong. Um, pretty cool schemes that they had. Both of them ran different offenses, but uh, but the two guys from Madden Daily really played well. Also, wanted to say uh, problem, you know, complete great respect for problem. Uh, you know, played a great game. Uh, always shows up tournament time with a great scheme, with a great uh, concept. Makes simple things work very very effectively. Um, and so that's one of my things that I would like to say uh, about problem. Now I want to get into the championship. Uh, kind of the quarterfinals and then the finals, uh, or excuse me, the semifinals and then the finals. So, um, Spot Me Please uh, was one of the better players, I think, in the tournament coming in. He was uh, kind of underrated. I mean, people didn't really know a whole lot about him, uh, except for some of the players that had played him before. And um, one of the things that we saw from Spot Me Please was we saw a really, really effective passing offense uh, from the Indianapolis Colts playbook. Um, he was really utilizing the uh, shotgun bunch tight end uh, very effectively. Uh, really, the only downfall came uh, was when he played Problem. He had a hard time stopping some of uh, some of the running that Problem was doing from the Seattle Seahawks playbook. But I mean, overall, I thought Spot Me Please was one of the players that kind of stole the show. Uh, we all kind of always expect I mean, you always expect guys like uh, Stiff Lights Out and those guys. You always expect them to be good. Um, but, you know, and then one thing I did want to talk about, too, is that aggressive catch was a big, big deal in this tournament. Um, Sirius Mo, the former Madden Challenge champion, uh, won in, the, I think he won in January or somewhere in there. And one of the things that he was, um, he lost to the uh, eventual champion, uh, Stiff. But uh, when he played his game, uh, you could tell that one of the main reasons he got defeated was that he could, it was like every jump ball he could not catch. He couldn't catch it, either on offense or defense. Every aggressive catch was going to stiff in that game, and it was just one of those games where I mean, that's kind of what it was. And it's interesting to me how big of a role that played uh, in the game uh, because normally uh, features like that, you don't expect it to play that big of a role. But it, I mean, it really, I mean, it really did kind of, I mean, it, it decided a couple games uh, for sure. And, but everybody had the same, pretty much same base rosters. They had uh, a lot of people were utilizing the golden ticket Mike Evans um, and the golden ticket Des Bryant. Um, I think some guys were using the Calvin Johnson as well. I know Stiff used a couple of different players as his receivers, uh, but kind of, the strategy was to really kind of spend high on your receivers. Um, that seemed like the main, the main strategy. Um, and so a lot of people were running with the Gronkowski golden ticket, um, the golden ticket Dez, the golden ticket Evans, and then the golden ticket Calvin Johnson. So those were kind of the, the four or five guys that if you're, you know, look, looking for who to target, that's what everybody was doing. Um, now my suggestion is, uh, kind of off of watching Spot Me Please play is that one of the things I thought Spot Me Please really showed was that you could be very effective offensively uh, without having you know to rely on the aggressive catch and um, and he was able to really do a good job but basically I want to explain why aggressive catch was so important in this game and why it's so important that aggressive catch needs to be dealt with um, so basically what, what I saw was that um, People, whenever their reads were kind of, a lot of the defenses, right? A lot of the important defenses are cover three blitzes. Um, if you guys have my, you know, running the defense that I'm running in this game from New England, you know, the whole basics is cover three defense. I mean, it's, it's cover three blitzes, three deep, three under shell. What that does, though, is it leaves you one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And what was interesting to me was, there's a bunch of new pressures that came into light. Uh, a lot of people were running the crossfire blitzing concepts from the nickel 245 prowl um, and the double loop. Uh, a lot of people were running 
you know, just kind of, you know, running that best. That was mainly the blitzing concept. But I want to talk for a second about uh, one of the more effective defenses I saw was lights out from Madden Daly. What he was doing was really effective, I thought. Uh, he was running the big dime 146, and he was running the pressure that we, we taught uh, a couple weeks back, he was he was pretty much just kind of sitting in that defense and making adjustments. Now he did some other things too. It's not the only play he ran, but my point is the reason that 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 was so effective for him. And we'll show you that defense here real quick, I think. Uh, but the reason that that defense was so effective for him was because uh, was because it was able to combat the aggressive catch. People couldn't get one on one aggressive catches, and it stymied a lot of what people would have been used to because. What really happens is you get accustomed to playing, you know, so much, and you face a lot of similar defenses that you become really good at beating some defenses, and really not very good at beating other defenses. And so anyway, basically the concept is that people have become accustomed to beating those cover three blitzing style defenses by just getting those great wide receivers, and normally they're going to win that one-on-one -on -one matchup with the aggressive catch. But what Lights was able to do was come out in that cover two man style, and what's interesting to me is that. Uh, Sirius Mo completely changed his defense from what he ran in the Madden Challenge when he won. Uh, he was running heavy, heavy, heavy dime normal and a lot of two-man under, and it worked very effectively. He was one of the best defenses in the game. And then a couple new blitzes come out, and next thing you know, Sirius Mo is running nickel 245 proud. Now, I'm not saying anything about Sirius Mo. I'm just saying that you know that may have been a reason why. Um, you know That may have been a, a little bit of a reason why, because in, in the game against Stiff, Sirius Mo was struggling uh, to stop the aggressive one-on-one -on -one catches. And so um, just something to consider, guys. I mean, you know, cover two man is it's a very simple defense, but it's very effective, especially when you can mix in some pressure that you got uh, from some other things. And it may just be a good defense to kind of throw at your opponent every now and then. I mean, you know, I, I've, I don't really like man-to-man -man defense ever. I always like zones because I love the chess match I can play with my zone coverages. But... This season, I've ran a lot of cover two man because I just I just can't stand it when I get you know aggressive caught on. And I found a couple of strategies to be able to kind of take that away, uh, but nothing that's really very consistent. It normally just comes down to if you leave them one on one, there is a chance that you're going to get mossed over the top, and there's not a whole lot of strategy behind it. It, it literally is just a a read thing, but. I don't know. I mean, that's what I would say to you guys. Uh, if you if you want to kind of a couple things to kind of pick up on from the challenge. Uh, another thing that I think is important to to kind of pick up on from the Madden challenge is that uh, you know game management is so so important. Knowing when to, knowing when to pick and choose uh, your spots is really really important. We saw that all game long. Um, basically, what what I think is one of the biggest things that made Problem such a good player is because he mastered the clock. He he really did a good job of controlling the game with the clock, and that helped him immensely, um, especially in battles where he maybe shouldn't have even won the game, but he won it because of his clock management more than anything. And uh, you know that matters uh, when you're when you're looking at that. Another thing that I think is important when you're playing defense, guys is to remember that the pace of the game can sometimes lead you to want to run defenses you maybe probably shouldn't run. Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes you'll get frustrated or they'll have a turnover and you'll you know, want to send a blitz or something. And I've learned, if anything, from this watching this game that if you want to run those 2 4 5 proud defenses, and they're really good defenses, but again, you want to be careful you know, how much you're running because... Uh, something like that, right? Right here, you just he's been blitzing me, blitzing me, blitzing me. I'm able to get a one on one with a really good receiver on the outside, and uh, end up you know getting in for six. So, you know, guys, this is just some things that I would recommend. Uh, another thing that's very very popular, I think, uh, is the high pass lead post routes. Those are those are becoming very very effective. People are starting to really master those. And Stiff from Madden Daily really showed off the power of the Saints halfback wheel from their gun snug or the single back snugs um, because, of, because of the way you can utilize the post routes. Another thing that I think um, also is like if you're facing press coverage, a simple, a simple fade route and motion snap. Uh, if you motion him out and then kind of 
snap it so it gets a little speed burst. That seems to do really, really good. Um, so you may try that out as well. There's just several, several things that you can learn from this weekend, guys. But overall, I think the big takeaway for me from the Madden Challenge is that you need to, you need to kind of figure out, you know, don't just run one play on defense. I mean, a lot of and, – and I understand that a lot of people were making adjustments out of that one play and it wasn't the only play they were running, but I did not see very much man-to-man -man defense. And I was actually kind of shocked because that was the main defense the last time. And part of what I think happens with Madden players, the more that I kind of study the game and watch and, and learn from everybody, is that they kind of want to stick with what, what, what's called the meta of the game. You know, so for example, right now the meta of defense is that is the crossfire blitzes. Those are the most popular things, um, and those are probably one of the like the hottest, like the hot new thing to do is to work those crossfires in. The at the beginning of the season, a lot of players were were running, um, a lot of players were running the quarter three deep stuff, and and the, and then saw in the challenge. I mean, we saw quarter three deep maybe one time, and it was to stop the run. So, you know, I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, uh, but I'm just trying to say, you know, this is what I've learned. Uh, and I think one of the most important things that I've learned is that, is that you can't just jump with the meta. You have to take things, even from the beginning of the year, and keep tweaking them and making them better. And man-to-man -man coverage, I was just so surprised that people weren't using that cover two man as much as I thought they would. Um, you know, and I think that's a... I think that was a big deal. I think the people that used a fairly good amount of cover two man played pretty well. Um, you know, and again, you know, it wasn't the only thing they called, but when you mix cover two man in, I think the power of it to be at least to be able to kind of contain the game and let you kind of let you kind of see what they're gonna do. I think that's a big deal uh, when you're facing or when you're playing a game is to be able to get the flow of the game. Being able to kind of go with the flow, kind of tell what's going on. Uh, you know, there's very few routes in this game that consistently beat man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, it just is what it is. Like, for example, this guy right here, he's got this table route to the flat. Um, that's one of those routes that beat man. But outside of that, from this formation, there's really nothing. And what you'll see right here is I'm going to try to come down on it. And see? So it forces a, a read to that corner route, and we're, we're all over that. And because it just doesn't beat man-to-man -man bump. Uh, so I would just recommend more man-to-man -man from what I could see. Uh, again, I, I mean, obviously I didn't get the chance to play in it, and I'm not the best player, but that's just an observation that I have that I think could be very effective for you guys. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about as we're kind of transitioning into the offseason for real now, because this was the challenge, this was probably the last major tournament um, we're going to have this season. Crap, I got got clicked off of my guy. Um, but as we're transitioning to kind of what's really seriously definitely the off season at this point, uh, you know, I would recommend, you know, kind of figuring out what do you want to run? How do you, you know, what do you want to run for next season? But not even that, but more so, like, I would get really comfortable with learning how to user control. Uh, learning how to do things that are going to be transcendent every year, um, working in the, the ins and outs of you know reading the defense, those things, and we're going to be talking a little bit at our channel from now on about you know what makes a really good Madden player, why was problem good, you know, in twenty, I don't know, in two thousand and seven, and he's also just as good if not better in two thousand and sixteen. You know what what makes problem consistently in and out one of the better players in the game every year? Why is it that? You know, why is it that, you know, people who were good one year, they, you know, they, they're only good for one season, and then they, you know, they kind of fall off the map. We'll talk about that uh, and why that happens. Oh, that was so stupid. I should have high pass load that. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, we're also going to talk about what you can do right now to get better for next season, uh, which there are several things that you can do. Um, one of those, like I said, is, is working on reading the defenses. I think that's probably the most important thing that you can do right now. Uh, if you learn how to read the coverages, um, it's so, so, so beneficial. But uh, another thing we're going to talk about, too, is the idea about what it takes to create schemes. So that way, you know, at the beginning of next season, 
You guys can just kind of hit the ground running with your scheme. Uh, I think that's a really important thing because schemes are not... Let me just give you a quote from Vince Lombardi, one of the quotes I've been wrestling with recently. Vince Lombardi says this. He says, Coaches that can diagram plays on a chalkboard are a dime a dozen. The ones who win are the ones who get inside their players and motivate them. Now, obviously, we, we're not motivating our players, but what I kind of think about when I think about him saying something like that is this idea of execution. Um, and, and really more so than that, you know, not just execution, but but effective execution. And, and, and I think that this is a really transcendent concept, but what we're really talking about here is this idea that, you know, how do we get consistently executing? The... I mean, the number one thing that I saw in the Madden Challenge that made some of these guys so good, I thought, was just their ability to consistently execute against different coverages, different looks, different defenses, different adjustments, different user user plays, different, you know, all of those things. And we're going to teach you how to do that. Um, a lot of it comes with practice. Um, a lot of it comes with repetition, and I will say that up front. But there are certainly things that we can teach um, and so I look forward to teaching you guys uh, whatever I can about that. But uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the idea. Um, and then we'll do a couple of other things uh, as well to kind of get you thinking about next season. Uh, we'll still have some content. I mean, we'll you know we'll still keep playing games and, and getting better. You, you can't get better if you're not playing games. Uh, if there's one thing I've learned, it's it's that you cannot get better unless you're playing good competition, uh, you know, playing games over and over again, and not even good competition. I think it's just competition, like getting out on the sticks, competing. And that's one of the things I'm so thankful for salary cap rank for because the competition is actually pretty, I mean, it's pretty good in my opinion so far, uh, a lot better than what you'll normally see, like in just a head to head season or something like that. I mean, the competition definitely is, you know, they're playing the game to, you know, really kind of take that next level approach. Um, a lot of people are playing salary that are that got used to salary cap. We're playing in the Madden Challenge or the Madden Championship, so you get better competition, in my opinion. Uh, on the, at least at large, you, you really kind of do, I think. Uh, but anyway, so there's that. Um, another thing we'll talk about some in the off season this year is the I you know kind of teaching you some concepts that we learned from NFL coaches uh, like Nick Saban and Bill Walsh and guys like that. And what we're hoping is that by teaching you some of those concepts that you're going to be able to be very effective uh, at implementing them in whatever formation you're running. Um, you know, formation is not the end-all, be-all. What's the end-all, be-all is how do you execute that formation to success. That, that's the big thing that I'm concerned with trying to teach, and that's what we're going to try to do here this season. So, you know, we're going to teach you a lot of concepts, um, I try to teach concepts because I think they transcend, you know, what, you know, formation by formation, you know, I can apply a levels concept out of a trips, out of a doubles, out of a I formation, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk a lot about that. Also want to get into the topic about why, um, you know, why people run a lot of trips formations in men. I think that would be a good idea to talk about that. So we're going to talk about formations like strength, like doubles versus trips and, and all those things. I think that'll be pretty good for us. Uh, but anyway, uh, okay, so for the rest of this video, uh, I, want, I want to kind of go back to the Madden Championship a little bit and uh, kind of talk a little bit about what um, defensively I saw. Because we talked a little bit about offense. Uh, I kind of want to go to defense now. So again, um, you know, like I said, I think that two-man under was a little bit underused uh, this this time I mean they really didn't see it a whole lot um, so I think that you know maybe some more two man under would have been definitely appropriate uh, just because of how effective it was uh, I thought that what was interesting to me too also was that players that were really good in the last tournament came back to this one and did not perform as well uh, Skimbo did not start out fairly well uh, D Jones did not play very good uh, you know so, much, so guys like that and it's not that they're bad players or, you know, that they, they may have just had a bad game. You know, I don't know, but they didn't perform on the stage. It is what it is. Um, it was kind of cool to see, uh, you know, all the newcomers. But, again, a lot of it comes down to that aggressive catch stuff. I mean, it really does. You know, more than you guys probably realize. I mean, 
a lot of people's offenses were using that aggressive catch heavily. Um, you know, it's my, more of like a bailout read if everything was covered was how they were using it. But the problem was that when they had to go to it, it was like it's almost it was very difficult to stop it. Um, so, but as far as um, pressure, again, a lot of saw a lot of people running the double loop uh, defenses. That was probably the main one. The I didn't see any anything we probably haven't seen, and that's the interesting thing about watching tournaments is you kind of expect to see all these different things, but you normally never see the different things. You just see the basic things executed better, and uh, you know that's kind of that's at least kind of what I've seen. Uh, you know, a lot of double loop, a lot of double loop defenses, uh, crossfire blitzes, and those those were heavily used. But again. I'm surprised that not as many people ran uh, two man under defenses. Uh, that was probably the most interesting thing to me about this tournament was that as effective as two man under was, especially as and as heavily as it was used a lot utilized in the last tournament, uh, not a whole lot of people ran it. Another thing that I wanted to kind of touch base on is that a lot of people did not have very good run defense. Um, that was interesting to me because. When you think about it, I mean, Madden 16, I mean, it, it's a pretty effective running game. I mean, there's there's ways that you can definitely dominate a, a game of Madden this year just by running the ball. So it was very interesting to me that there wasn't a whole lot of attention to detail being paid on the running game. Uh, just didn't see a ton uh, outside of, like, inside zone. Like, if you could stop inside zone, then people didn't really worry about it, but... Like, for example, Stiff ran a lot of halfback dives from the single back snugs, and people had a very hard time stopping that. Uh, problem obviously ran fullback dive from the Seattle Seahawks I formation and was very effective. Uh, people had a very hard time stopping that as well. So those are a couple of things that I would say uh, that it were interesting to me from the defensive perspective. You know, if you're going to be playing in a tournament, you have to be ready for every kind of run. Because uh, what you'll find is that people will come out and they'll run the ball a lot more in a tournament environment in large part because of the uh, in large part because of the nature of the tournament atmosphere. Uh, the tournament environment is much more cutthroat. You're trying to really kind of uh, really trying to oh, crap come on Tom Brady. Uh, you're trying to really kind of streamline your offense. You don't want to make too many mistakes. You know, that's the kind of environment that you're going to be in when you're in a tournament environment. And the problem, I think, for most of us is that sometimes we only prepare to stop the pass and we don't prepare enough to stop the run. And, you know, that's caused, that caused an issue. Uh, caused an issue in this tournament for sure because some people came with run defense, some people didn't. The people that came with run defense and were able to stop quarterback sneak and halfback slams and fullback dives and things those guys played pretty pretty well but the guys that couldn't stop the run they they didn't last very long um because when you can run the ball what it allows you to do it allows you to really control the clock um especially if you're a really good running running player and problem is definitely one of the best running players uh right now in my opinion so that's a couple things uh the other thing about defense i think again going back to that man-to-man -man coverage like in the red zone, people were not running man to man. They were running like cover three zone blitzes, and it was opening up the post routes, and, like the the post routes that people will use or catch, um, or they'll aggressive catch it over the middle. And I, I don't know, guys. I I just think that was not a smart move, because I mean, right here, say there's man coverage again. I mean, like right there, there's cover two man. Now I can take a couple shots at the end zone. But the idea, guys, again, it goes back to this whole mentality that you got to do what works. You know, it may not be fun all the time, but I just don't understand why people did not run main coverage. Because what was happening, they were running cover three blitzes in the in the red zone. And the problem with that was it was leaving, um, it was leaving like areas that they could easily throw, um, they could easily throw some darts over the middle, um, just for simple, 
simple aggressive catches, like simple post routes. I mean, it wasn't really wasn't anything special. It was just a lot of aggressive catches. I mean, and it's fine because it worked for them. But I would just you know kind of say to the players that were playing. Um, you know, it may be smarter next time to maybe use more man to man, uh, because what you're going to get with that man to man coverage against those post routes is it's going to glue to them, you know, and you're going to get double coverage over the middle. Now, again, it may not stop it, you know, I may, you know, but I think it would have done a little better job than the defense that they had right there. That was pretty piss poor offense at the end of the half. We three incomplete passes and did not execute after a turnover, so pretty much terrible execution right there by me but hopefully you guys see what I'm saying um, another thing I think you know I, I probably made changes up on my salary cap lineup it's a spend on your kicker uh, serious move missed a field goal and it, a field goal and it really really kind of hurt him uh, when it came to it really hurt him when it came to the game because it got him really frustrated um, it hurt him especially because he came more aggressive which means he wanted to blitz more, which means he looked one on one a lot more. And all of that combined, it just really it made him struggle quite a bit. So I would recommend, uh, you know, maybe going out because I didn't spend on my kicker. And I'm with, I'm right now currently using a, a lineup that I already kind of have to use because of the, because of the way the salary cap system works. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to try to make sure that I get back uh, Brandon McManus card. Because he's a very, because he's, he's got that 99 kick power. Again, he's got, you know, about, you'll probably spend about 20 cap value on him. But I'm just telling you, he's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty important position. The more that I think about it, I probably should have already spent money on my kicker. I just didn't do it. Um, so real quick. If you, want to, if you guys have been watching this game, one of the things you've been seeing, this guy's running a lot of cover zero on me right now. And he's just kind of running the same defense over and over again. Uh, we got about, it's about 14 to 7. So my thing right now is to kind of really keep everything. Just kind of keep the ball moving. Uh, I'm not too worried about the pressure. Oh, crap. No, I say that and then I get shamed right there I thought I could hit something he switches to a cover one which is a pretty good switch up right there so see he's going to do a kind of a checkmate change of pace mid blitz mid mids mid mids coverage um, but um, I kind of been thinking this corner strike play is actually really interesting to me I think it might be one of the better plays in the game because you can't I mean that corner out if you don't press out of man coverage you're not going to be able to stop it if you press out of man coverage then I can easily go to a couple of other options that I'm going to have available to me uh, on the play. So with this guy especially, uh, and then they press up like that. See, he's going to go to this cover one probably now. So I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to hit Tyler over the top. He checks out. So we got Tony Gonzalez on a zig, but. The thing right now with this guy's defense is he's kind of just saying, I'm going to send six and try to make you make a mistake, which is a fine strategy. Problem one, the Madden Challenge with that strategy. Uh, but what we're going to be able to do is, uh, we should be able to do anyway, is to take pretty good advantage of this. So this is a concept I saw in the Madden Challenge this last go-around, was to put this guy on a fade, motion him out, and he actually does a pretty good job of getting some separation. And just kind of bombing it to him. Uh, that right there, I probably wasn't quite as good as some of the other guys were executing it. But when they go cover zero like that, I, I find motion the motion snap streaks do really good. Like motion snap a fade. And we'll probably go back to it right here. This route to Antonio Brown is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, we're going to do this. And try and bring a little crossing pattern across because of the press that was why we did that so he's running like trying to press out of that mid blitz 
So the bump animation on my on my receiver that was going on that fancy streak on the far right, what that's going to do is it's going to create a little natural pick for that crossing pattern to come underneath. So right here, um, whoops, I didn't mean to flip the play. So right here, what he's going to do, we're going to try to hit this rep to Amari Cooper. Um, max protect. And he's going to leave it wide open. Yep, that's wide open. So he's been usering, usering kind of the outside a little bit. Um, and what that's made me do is it's made me kind of have to go away from the C route on the PA. But uh, what we've been able, what we were able to do right there, we were able to easily catch him in a bad situation because use that motion we got out wide. Looks like this guy's going to go ahead and end the game. But, uh, yeah, guys, I just want to thank you for watching. I hope that something I said in this video uh, helped you out a little bit with your game. I think some of the lessons we could take from the Madden Challenge are very important. So just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about what I saw out there. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, I'd ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and look out for some of our tips coming up. Thanks.